him, Nicodemus, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God, right? And we know that when we believe in Jesus, we enter his kingdom now, and, and we will live in, in it with him for eternity, right? Uh, so the kingdom of God is now. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're already a citizen of God's kingdom. The rules have changed for you, okay? Um, and then when, if Jesus returns first or, or when you uh, get the opportunity to, to leave this part of life and go to heaven, you'll, you'll be with him. And, and, of course, Christ is going to return. New heaven, new earth. We'll look at that briefly. Uh, and, and you will be a citizen of his kingdom with all of his people for eternity, okay? All right, so let's just look at those words really quick from John chapter 3. Jesus replied to Nicodemus, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God, what, help me out, unless he is born again. Jesus answered. Nicodemus asked him another question. Jesus answered. Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God, what, unless they are born of water and the spirit. Water refers to physical birth here, which Jesus makes clear in the next sentence. Flesh gives birth to flesh, right? Physical life gives birth to physical, I mean physical birth gives birth to physical life, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, gives birth to spirit, gives life to our spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying what? You must be born again. Now, I don't know about you, I'm, I'm sure you're with it, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jesus is pretty clear that me and you, all of us need to be, what, born again. Unless we're born again, right? We cannot. Now, why must we be born again? Because we're dead in our trespasses and sins, according to, according to God's word and according to God himself, right? Our sin has separated us from God. That's what it is, separated from God. Your spirit is not in union with the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, right? So that's what dead means, separated from God, not united with the Holy Spirit, no spiritual life. We looked at this verse quickly, Ephesians chapter 2, just to kind of make that point clear, verses 4 and 5. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. When? Even when we were dead in our transgressions, right? For it is by grace you have been saved. God, grace, God's, God's generous, loving, undeserved, unearnable kindness and love. So what must we do to be born again? Jesus answered that question. We looked at it last week, but let me just recover it. Two words, repent and believe, right? Repentance is a change of mind. A change of mind that leads to a change of direction. What, what's my part in being born again? It's changing my mind about Jesus Christ. Who is he? What has he done? The son of God who died and rose again to, to pay for my sin, to give me new life, right? That's repentance. Change my mind about Jesus and what I need to do in relationship with him. That change of mind leads to a change of life right? And then believe. Believe that Jesus is who he said he was, did what he said he, he did, that I need what he said I need, right? All those things. Repent and believe, okay? So today, we're going to, here it is. The Holy Spirit makes you brand new, okay? I want you to say that with me. The Holy Spirit makes me brand new. The Holy Spirit makes me brand new, Right, So it's one thing to say, hey, you must be born again, and say, hey, you are born again. But this week and next week, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that and see just what does that mean? What does it mean? And, and, you know, in a broad brush, it means the Holy Spirit has made you brand new. That's what it means. Okay? So let's look at that. Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. Okay? Another passage that teaches on this gives us a couple words we're going to look at, a couple concepts. <clears throat> now, just a little background. Titus was a, uh, a disciple, a protege of the Apostle Paul. Paul's writing this to him. He was a, he was a young pastor of a church, 
and, and Paul's giving him instruction. And so here, Paul is describing himself and Titus and us as believers as well. So he says this, at one time, in other words, at some time in the past, at one time, we too, Titus, congregation, James, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Right, So I can, I, I can tell you that, that I was guilty and have been guilty of many of those things that Paul just listed. It sounds a lot like our, our world, doesn't it? Being hated and hating one another. Deceptive, malicious, right? unkind, ungracious, enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. Verse 4. But when, there's a change that happens. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, when you repent and believe in Jesus, there is a before and after moment. He creates a before and after moment in your life. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Not because of righteous things we have done. We learned that about Nicodemus. He was a very self-righteous man, right? An incredibly religious man. Not because of the righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of what? Rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. That's being born again. Being the washing of rebirth and renewing by the Holy Spirit. Whom he poured out on us, how? Generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So as I said, Paul lays down a a contrast here. The, The B.C. life, the before Christ life. He says, hey Titus, hey Hey, uh, hey, congregation, hey, James, listen, before Christ, this is who you were. This is what you were like. This is what your life was like. This is, this, is the, this is where you were headed. These were your values. This is the way you interacted with other people, right? But then, that was the past, but when you were saved, when the Holy Spirit uh, washed you through rebirth and renewed you, right, you were changed. He changed you. And God did it generously. You ever feel like, you know, you might be just one of those people that God kind of saved and forgave reluctantly? Right? Have you? I mean, I have. I spent a long time like that. Right? Right? Like God was like, James is repenting and believing. I guess I got to save him. You know? I'll just give him a little. Just enough. That'll, there, that'll get you. That, that'll get you into heaven. Right? You ever feel like that? We usually feel like that when, we're, when things aren't going well. When, we're not, when we know we're not following Jesus. When, when, when we're not where we should be in relationship with God. And, and we can live. Listen, there are many, many Christians who live their entire life. Their, 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 their uh, BA, their born again life, like that. They've been made new by the Holy Spirit, but they live as though they're still the same old person in the same old relationship with God. That God is never happy with his work of salvation. It's a terrible place to be. Uh, sometimes it feels good though, right? We kind of we like to beat ourselves and say, you know, I deserve it. I don't, I don't deserve God. Yeah, that's why it's called grace. That's why it's called mercy, Okay. So there's this before and after. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a line across the timeline of your life before you were born again and after you were born again. This is God's work. This is God's view of you. His view of you, because His work in you has changed you, and His view of you has changed, okay? And who you are has changed. Rebirth and renewal. The Holy Spirit, he renews, he recreates, he regenerates, he remakes us into someone who is brand new. Someone who did not previously exist 
before that point. Okay? You existed before that point without the Holy Spirit, separated from God, dead in your trespasses and sins. But God has made you and me someone new now. We didn't, we don't, we're not that old person. We are a new creation in Christ. We didn't, had never existed this way before. The Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit united with our spirit, leading us, drawing us, pushing us, convicting us, convincing us towards Christ, making us holy in God's eyes. Jesus used this word renewal when he talked about uh, when God will restore all things. And by all things, I mean all things. And we'll see that. A new heaven, a new earth. Right? New universe. When the Bible says heaven and earth, what that really means is universe. Okay? God's going to make the new heavens and the new earth. He's going to recreate, renew his creation. All right? Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you at the what? At the renewal, same concept of all things. Of all things. The Son of Man, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, right? That's Jesus. Heaven comes to earth. Heaven and earth become one thing. Jesus sits as king, rules as king over all of humanity for eternity, okay? With God long underneath God the Father, right? Uh, you, have follow, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now that's speaking of the uh, apostles there, okay? Let's look at that in Revelation really quickly, chapter 21. Then I saw, John says, a new heaven and a new earth, right? For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. So just as God remade you when you were born again, God is going to give new birth to his creation. He's going to restore it back to what he originally created and intended it to be before Adam and Eve sinned and, and we fell into sin. And, and, and God allowed that free right, free will, and it changed his creation. But God is in the work of redemption. And there was no longer any sea, okay? So to be reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit, well, here's one. It's the production of a new life. The word often used to denote uh, renewal or reborn is the restoration of a thing to its pristine state. Think of that word, pristine. What's that mean? Like no spots, right? No blemishes. I mean, we don't buy new cars in our family, but uh, <laughs> when you buy a new car, well, we buy new used cars, right? So we get a new one, but it's already been used. But, but you buy a new car, right, and, and, and it's pristine. There's no scratches. There's no dents. There's no miles, right? There's no B.O. in that thing, right? Your sons, your, your, your kids haven't got off practice and sat in the seat and their, their sweat hasn't soaked in. I mean, like, we've been on the road all summer, and I'm like, Christy, i got to, like, get, a, like, a gallon of, what is that, baking soda, and just, just, like, everything, let it sit there for a day, and then suck it, you know, vacuum it all up. Because when it gets hot, you know, it gets ripe in there, right? That's not pristine, you know? And then you get that first scratch, right? You park it, you go into the store, and somebody had the audacity to ding your pristine car, right? It's It's frustrating. Right? And it's no longer pristine, you know? Man, I can't believe that. Like they didn't even leave a note. Right? That's, that's that pristine state. Right? That's what, that's what Jesus, that's what the Holy Spirit did to you when, you when he gave you new birth. He restored you to the pristine state that God originally created you for. Okay? Um, you guys know that I like to share my woes and troubles and sorrows when it comes to like doing work at my house, re re renovating my house. So we spent like two years, it was perfect timing, it was the COVID years, uh, 2019, 2020, some of 2021, actually I'm still not done, it's going into 2022, but, but, uh, but we, we, we resided the entire house, you know, and when you looked at it, you know, the siding was a little bit faded, but it looked pretty good on the outside, you know, I, you couldn't see any big holes, you know, there was no rot to see out there. 
But then we got to recite it, and we got around the front of the house where there's a big picture window and then two casement windows beside it, you know, and we ripped off the siding, and there was a colony of ants. I mean, like, you know, a million ants in there. Thank goodness they weren't carpenter ants, you know, but just ants everywhere. It was damp and wet under there, right? We ripped it all off. You know, it was, it was nasty. And, and then some of the plywood, you know, if you know how a house is built, on the outside you got the siding, then underneath that there's usually some kind of membrane, and then under that there's plywood sheathing. And under that is like the, the bones, the studs, the structure of the house. So the plywood was, was just rotted. Now you couldn't see it from the outside. It wasn't there. This happened with another window around the side of the house. Right, so... Okay, so we got to rip off some plywood sheathing. Okay, I ripped it off, and guess what I found underneath the plywood sheathing? All the studs, the frame was rotten. The sill was rotten. It's like an eight-foot-long sill. All the studs underneath it were rotten. The insulation was nasty. You know, a bunch of, by that time, a bunch of dead ants in there, you know, and, and all kinds of stuff. So we had to get in there and cut all of that stuff out. I had to figure out how to you know, support that big window while I was doing all that stuff. I'm not a carpenter, you know, I just watch YouTube, right? And then put, you know, right? And, and rip it all out, clean it all out, get it all out, and then put new studs, new sill, right? Brand new. Uh, put some new insulation in there, cut new plywood, put it back on, cover it with a new membrane, and put new siding on it. So restored it to its pristine state, like it wasn't built in 1970, at least under and around those two windows, right? That's what the Holy Spirit did to you and does to you the moment you repent and believe in Jesus. He comes inside of your body, right? We learned that. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your spirit is now in union with God's spirit, right? He gets inside your siding, right? You look really good on the outside, right? Not too bad, you know? You, we hide it all, right? He gets in there and he cleans out all the rot and the junk and the gunk that sin has created inside of you and he rips it out and he replaces it with new stuff, with a new life. Okay, this is what God does to you and for you when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. All the guilt, all the regret, all the, all, all the, uh, uh, the, the, the sin, um, all, the, all the shame, all the hate, uh, all the, uh, the, 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 the problems and, and uh, bitterness and rage and anger and fear. He, he, he wants to take it all out. He takes it all out. It does, right? And makes you brand new. You see, you don't have to live like you're a product of your past. You don't have to do it as a Christian. As I said, many Christians do. They, they put their faith in Jesus Christ. He forgives them. He makes you a new creation. Right? You're loved and accepted completely by God now. You are a, a part of his family. You're a son or daughter in his family. You're a citizen, a citizen of his kingdom. You are headed for heaven, eternal life. Nothing can change it, right? Nothing can, as J Jesus said in John 6, or 6, I think, snatch you out of the Father's hand, right? Nothing in all creation can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, right? That's what God says. But we continue to go around like you're a product of your past, you're a product of the sins you've committed, of the sins that have been committed against you, the problems you've had, the mistakes you've made, the stupid, you know, stuff you've done, right? And, and, and you don't have to live that way. God, you don't. You are a product now, at least as far as God is concerned, and we'll see that we need to get us, you are now a product of Christ's finished work on the cross and the work of the Holy Spirit in you to make you brand new. You understand that? Like that's so important. 
Okay, I know from my own self, I know you guys, I know you carry junk around. I know you carry stuff around that say, if I, if, if I hadn't done that, or man, I'm, I'm always this kind of person. That's living like a product of your past. That's thinking like you're a product of your past. God has made you new through the work of the Holy Spirit. You're not a product of your past. You're a product of Christ's finished work on the cross and the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit inside you. So there's some some ties that we need to cut in our own minds that God has already cut. The problem isn't God hasn't cut them. It's that we haven't cut them in our own mind. Because as far as he's concerned, they're cut. So let's look quickly, a little deeper, three things the Holy Spirit does to us when he gives us new birth. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Now this gets a little, this is right to the point, but we're going to see that before and after contrast again. That clear before Christ and and born again life. Distinction that God makes that we saw in the first verse. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Right? Now that reminds me of Jesus, right? He said, unless you are born again, you cannot see what? The kingdom of God. Okay? So Paul here is, again, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Corinth, he's probably thinking of Jesus' words here, right? Wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And again, just let me make sure you understand that that list, I am guilty of many of those things. I have been guilty of many of those things. Every one of us have. Maybe not the whole list. Okay? So this is not about, hey, I'm perfect, Pastor James is perfect, or you've been perfect or anything. This is who we were B.C. before Christ. Okay? And that is what some of you, what? Were. That's what some of you were. Okay? And and that's what, some of that is what I was. But you, what? Were, what? Washed. You were, what? Sanctified. You were, what? Justified. You were this, but then something changed. You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and what? By the Spirit of our God, right? By the Spirit of our God. So we see that before and after contrast again. Washed. What does that mean? Just what you think it means. It means to be made clean. When the moment you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you repented and believed, the Holy Spirit washed you. He got all the dirt of sin off of you and out of you, right? He remade you just like, uh, you know, if you want to do the analogy, uh, me and and my boys were were the Holy Spirit to our house. We got in there and we ripped it all out and, and made it new, okay? You were washed. In John chapter 13, right, the night of the Last Supper, the night before Jesus is arrested and crucified, he did what? He washed the apostles' feet, right? And so he begins to wash the apostles' feet. It says he got up from dinner, he put a towel around him and and got some water, and then he he knelt at, at the apostles' feet and started washing their feet. And when he got to Peter, Peter said what? Lord, you will never wash my feet, right? He's 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 embarrassed, he's uneasy. Right? The Son of God, the King of kings and Lord of lords is on his knees going to wash his dirty feet. Right? We would feel the same way. He said, Lord, you're you're never going to wash my feet. Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, if I don't wash you, 
you have no part with me. And Peter said, well, in that case, Lord, wash my feet and my head, right? My whole body as well, right? He says, if that's the case, then, then man, wash all of me, right? And Jesus says, you know, Peter's a, you know, he's, he's a high energy dude, right? He got excited. And Jesus said, hey, Peter, you've, uh, you're, you're already clean. The person who's had a bath, right, you don't need your whole body washed. You just need to wash your feet, right? And that's because they all wore sandals and it was very dusty, right? We don't have that, that, that custom, right? But when you were a kid, and hopefully you still do it now, when you came in for dinner, right, what'd your mom say? Wash your hands, right? So wash your hands. You know, but I, I took a bath this morning, mom. Yeah, I know, but you've been out playing in the mud and the dirt, right? You need to wash your hands. Jesus said, hey, if, if I don't wash you, right, you have nothing. Peter says, wash me then, all of me. And Jesus says, hey, you're all, I've, I've already given you a bath, Peter. He that's had a bath only needs to wash his feet, right? You just, just need to confess. I've, I've already made you clean. And you are clean, Jesus went on, because of the word I've spoken to you. Right? So Jesus has made you clean. It's time for you and me to believe Jesus on that point. You, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you? Right? All we're doing is accepting Jesus' logic and work. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Washed. So here's what I do. Sometimes when I'm having a, uh, here's a, let you in on Pastor James' prayer life, right? Uh, when, when, I'm, when, I, when I'm confessing, when I'm praying, when I've done something, you know, and then you go through that, you're a stupid idiot, James, you know, what in the world are you doing, right, 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 right? Uh, live thinking and acting like I'm a product of my past, right? Um, and, and I'm having trouble kind of accepting God's forgiveness. Uh, I use this kind of as an image, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, I, I'm on my knees confessing my sin to God, and I just, I, I, I just, I'm a little bit goop embarrassed here, feels a little goofy to, to say this, right? This is only something me and God have shared before. <laughs> so uh, so uh, I'm on my knees and I, and, and I, just, I just get this mental image of, of rain coming down. I'm on my hands and knees and, and washing me, but not, right, the forgiveness, the Holy Spirit, the forgiveness of God, but not just washing me, but like washing through me, like, like just taking... Like, like the, all the coffee out of, out, of, out of coffee in a filter, you know? It just goes through me and just filters out all the guilt, all the sin, all the, right? Now, that's not why I'm forgiven, but it helps me understand God's forgiveness, right? I'm doing that because I'm being hard-headed. I've confessed my sin. I, I'm repenting as best I can. And, and now, shame does no good. You know, it feels good sometimes, right? It does. We, we need to admit that. Sometimes shame and beating yourself up feels good, right? And plus, it gives me an excuse to fail again, you know? But let me, let me tell you, if you're carrying around shame and guilt for things that you've confessed and repented and God has forgiven you of and you're born again, right? That's, and, or you're in, in the process of repenting, right? That is counterproductive to you living a full, joyful, empowered life. It's counterproductive, okay? It is... It is uh, I'm having word finding problems here. Imperative, that's the word I was looking for, that you accept that God has forgiven you and you do not carry guilt any longer. Satan uses guilt and shame to keep you. Not lost, you're saved, you belong to God, but he, keep, he uses it to keep you down. Okay? So you're washed. You're sanctified. What does that mean? It means set apart for God's use. Okay? If you go back to the Old Testament and you look at the temple and the tabernacle, right? And they had certain tools, shovels, knives, pans, right? All these things. They were sanctified tools. They were fancy. Some of them were gold, some were silver, but they were sanctified. What does that mean? It means they were set apart for God's use. Those pans, shovels, knives, forks, uh, whatever it was, whatever they were, were never used for anything other than the worship of God. Okay, you understand? They, they, maybe at one time they were used for other things, but they took them and they sanctified them, and now they were only for God's worship. 
Now they were only for God's glory. Now they were only for God's purposes. Okay? You tracking? Right? The moment you put your faith in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit gave you new life, He sanctified you. He took you from your BC position, dead in your trespasses and sins, separated from God, right? Headed for an eternity apart from God, and He sanctified you. He set you apart to God for His purposes, never to be used again for these old purposes, dedicated to the worship, glory, love, service, blessings of God. That's what sanctification means. Right? Sanctified and justified. What does justified mean? It means to declare and make righteous. It's a, it's a term, a legal term. It's what a judge does when he slams the gavel down and he says, not guilty. Or it's even better than that, actually, biblically speaking. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit came into you and gave you new birth, God didn't just, he's judge, right? He didn't just slam his gavel down and say, not guilty. That's not all he did. He slammed his gavel down and he said, not guilty, but not only not guilty, you are now righteous with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So you became guilty of something when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. What was it? The righteousness of Jesus Christ. You are now guilty in God's eyes of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's a big fancy word, imputed. If you read some stuff, that's God, God took Christ's righteousness and he put it in and on to you. And he says, not guilty, right? Why? Because Jesus took on all your sin, right? Listen, the gospel is an exchange. It is an exchange of position. Listen, Jesus lived a life of complete righteousness and love for his heavenly father and for his fellow man, right? He did that so that he could then take on, he could take our BC place, take on our sin, die for it, pay the penalty, the, the punishment that we deserve because of it, right? So that then we in our BC position put our faith in Jesus Christ and we can change to his position of righteousness with God. And it's not just God's word, declared and made. Okay, that's an important thing. You're not just the same old dirty, rotten, lousy sinner you were before, except now God says you're forgiven, right? No, you were what? You were dirty and you, he did what? He Washed you, right? Dirty washed. You tracking or what? <laughs> he, you were dirty, now he washed you, right? You were unholy, now he sanctified you. You are, he made you holy. So, and, and you were guilty, and now he justified you, okay? So this is not just a positional change. It's a, you, have, you, are, you are in a new state of being, Okay? It's not just position, it's state of being. You're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, right? All right, that's who God has made you. So what do we do with the reality that the Holy Spirit has made us brand new? Quickly, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Right? It's one thing to know this and to have it as a reality, but, but God wants you to do something with it. He wants me to do something with it, right? Verse 2, do not what? Conform to the pattern of this world, right? Listen, man, there's pressure in this world to conform, right? To conform to the ways of this world, to conform to the values of this world, to conform to the, the strategies and means and values and goals of this world. The world. Every time you go outside your house, there's pressure from the world to conform, right? Do not conform any longer the pattern, uh, pattern of this word, but be transformed, how? By the what? Renewing of your mind, okay? By the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve God's will, that God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. 
So just a couple of quick notes here. Uh, renew your mind. Number one, this is, right, we, we, we constantly talk about a distinction between a Book of Acts Christian and a normal American Christian, right? Book of Acts Christian, a Boac, and a Knack, a normal American Christian, okay? And this is a, this is a, 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 a glaring difference between a Book of Acts Christian and a normal American Christian. Uh, the, the vast majority of American Christians have not renewed their minds. They're born again. They're forgiven, right? They've repented and believed. The Holy Spirit has done his work. They're forgiven, but they're still thinking down the same paths and patterns, right? They still have the same opinions, the same, same view of the world. They're still pursuing and idolizing the same things. They still think they need these things instead of the things that God says we need, right? That's, that's a vast difference. You know, and when you live like that, and believe me, I've done it, I've tested it and tried it, it stinks, man. It stinks. Because you go around and, be, and, and you're like, man, I, God, I thought you saved me. I mean, what's, what's, what's happened here? And, and, and God's, I, I have. You, you've been made new. You've got to renew your mind. I've done my work. The Holy Spirit's done his work. But you're still thinking down. You've got that same old stuff going on. Right? The same old feed. Right? The same old feed. It's just always running in your head. Your response to situations, to problems, to people, right? Your fears, your doubts, your anger, whatever. It's that same old feed just runs, right? And that's what we got to renew, okay? So rebirth is the Holy Spirit's job. You can't do anything. I can't do anything to give myself rebirth. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And all I do is, is repent and believe. And the Holy Spirit helps me do that, right? That's his work. As, as well. So he does all that renovation. But renewing my mind is my job in cooperation with the Holy Spirit and God's Word. Right? I mean, there's so many believers that I run into and talk to, because it's my job, right? I'm a pastor. Um, and and, and, and they're, they're believers. I talk to them, I believe. But, but man, their mind is not renewed. They're still, they're still thinking the same old way. They still view life the same old way. You know, life still, you know, uh, that's our job in cooperation with the Holy Spirit and God's Word. So how do we renew our minds? Number one, generally, right? Read God's Word daily. Meditate on its meaning. Pray daily. And fellowship with the church, with believers. Right? Book of Acts, Christianity. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. What did they do? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, God's word, and to fellowship, the fellowship of believers, to the breaking of bread, right? The celebration and worship of, 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 uh, of Jesus and his death and resurrection, right? Communion. To the breaking of bread and to prayer. Right? That's, that's generally, if we're living a life devoted to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, the breaking of bread and prayer, right, our minds are going to be renewed. It's going to be a process. But if we're just depending on, you know, one hour a week here at Meeting House Church, it's going to be a slow, slow process. Okay? Make the decision and concerted effort to no longer conform to the world, right? Specifically. Just with, uh, with, with, with uh, respect uh, to the new birth that we've been talking about. How do I renew my mind? Change the feed. Change the feed in your mind. Okay? If you'll, I, I probably don't even need to point this out. But if you'll take some time, take a, a couple of days, and just, and just notice the feed that runs through your head during the day. Okay? Just as you go through the day, whatever happens, notice the feed. As soon as you wake up, notice the feed, okay? And, and ask yourself, is that in line with what the Holy Spirit has done to me? That he has washed me, that he has sanctified me, that he has justified me, that I am a new creation in Christ, that I am not that same old person. I'm not a product of my past. I am a product of Christ's finished work on the cross and the rebirth of the Holy Spirit. 
Right? Notice that. And then replace the feed. Right? Replace it with the truth. Whenever that thought is, man, James, you're just the same old stupid idiot you've always been, right? Nope, not going to let that feed run. No, I've been washed. I've been sanctified. I've been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. Okay? If you do that, you're going to create a new feed. Okay? That feed's not going to be the past anymore. It's going to be your present and future with God. It's an amazing thing to have your mind renewed, okay? Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, we, we praise you. You are so generous, so gracious, so faithful. God, we, I, I don't deserve it. None of us do, but we thank you and praise you that you have made us new people. We recognize, God, it's not because of any righteousness in ourselves. Any, we're, not, we're, not, we're not so good uh, that, that we get to go to heaven and everybody else is, is no, God, your, your, your salvation is by grace. Your love is by grace. The new birth we have is by your grace, God, and it's for everyone and anyone who will repent, change their mind about Jesus Christ and believe in him. Lord, thank you. You desire none of us to be separated from you, but that we would all come to repentance. I pray for those, Lord, who are here who have not been born again, who have not put their faith in Jesus Christ, that you, Holy Spirit, just communicate the love and grace of God, uh, your, your desire to forgive, God, uh, um, them, that you draw them to yourself and they just turn, Lord, Lord as you have you've done with all of us. I pray for us, Lord, who have been born again by your work, Holy Spirit, God, that we believe it, that we trust it, that we renew our minds and live to glorify you and declare that new birth to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. God is mighty to save, he is mighty to save, forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave, the Jesus conquered the grave. Take me as you find me. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I serve.
light, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world Have a great week. Go in peace.